Hey everybody, this is Rich. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And uh, uh, returning folks, appreciate you coming back and taking a look at another video. So today I am swapping out wheel spacers on my Toyota Tacoma. So uh, in my last video, I had my tires installed and I purchased some spacers to offset the wheel a little bit. Uh, because it was touching the control arm and I had purchased some three-quarter inch spacers. I initially thought that they were hub centric and I don't know what I was thinking but but they weren't uh, unfortunately. So I wanted to get some hub centric spacers. Um, the three-quarter inch ones were likely sufficient in terms of the offset away from the vehicle itself um, to make sure that we didn't have any touching or rubbing on any, uh, any of the uh, suspension components. Um, but unfortunately, because it's not hub-centric, uh, you know, I'd rather go with a one-inch. The manager at the Discount Tire had mentioned that I potentially might get a little bit of rubbing on the upper control arm if I were to stuff the wheel up, you know, I had full flex in, in suspension. Um, and so he was thinking maybe a one inch might do the trick. It'd be a, just enough uh, of an offset to account for that space. But when you continue to add negative offset to the wheel, that potentially um, might cause the wheel to have problems with um, rubbing on either side of the wheel well. So the further out you go, the more problematic it can be. And I was wanting to keep it as close into the wheel well inside the wheel the fender well as possible so i purchased a one inch spacer and wanted to show you what i got so these are the one inch spacers and these are the hub centric ones and so the difference between the hub centric and the uh, non-hub centric is that it has this extra lip on here and that lip is what your wheel will ride on that and it's just, the diameter of this is just small enough to fit, so the wheel fits on top of it, and it doesn't have any wheel slop, and you won't have any issues of it not maybe wandering around inside, inside the, uh, the wheel wandering around inside this area if, if it ever came loose, which if it ever came loose, we got problems anyway, but um, I just didn't like that... Uh, that this was hub centric and this one is not if it works you know i'll certainly go with the one inch there is another brand of spacer that makes a three quarter inch hub centric it's pretty pricey though um i think it's bora is the name brand you know if this doesn't work i'll probably go and get those uh it's worth the extra money for peace of mind it's obviously any wheel spacer that you use you're going to have to make sure that you use some sort of a thread locker on the original lug nuts to make sure that it stays in place. Um, probably a good idea to every time you rotate the tires to, you know, check the lug nuts on the spacers themselves to make sure that they are tight. Maybe the first time out, I would probably do it after maybe 100 miles, 300 miles. Uh, kind of check it initially to make sure you're not getting any kind of loosening. Um, but then just regular maintenance of it, uh, to be sure, because this is aluminum, um, it's not steel. Uh, so it, it is softer than the steel and potentially may have some movement and some softness over time. So that's something that you need to take into consideration when, when using these wheel spacers. So let's go ahead and take the wheels off the front end because i only have the spacers on the front end right now because i just wanted to be able to get the vehicle home and um potentially you know check out the different types of fitments for different kinds of spacers uh to get the perfect fit before i permanently install them You see how that wheel just kind of fell off uh, because the only thing that was keeping it centered was the the lug nuts themselves since they kind of these go inside the wheel itself this is what centers the wheel um, 
if it was hub centric, it would actually be riding on that ring that that the uh, that the wheel spacer on the other one has, and that way it doesn't come off. <clears throat> If this were a hub center spacer, it would fit on this uh, diameter part of the of the rotor, and it fits on nice and uh, flush to where it doesn't have any slop in here. So the only thing that's holding this wheel centered is these acorn nuts, which. In general, most wheels are like that, so it's not a terrible thing that it's like this. I mean, I'm not... It's not awful. It can be used. It's just not as safe, and with big wheels, it's just safer. Um, so, if you have a preference between one or the other, and they're both about the same price, oh, why wouldn't you go with the one that's going to be more accurate of a, of a fitment? So, we're going to go ahead and take this off. Now we just need to go ahead and install this new one. This has already been cleaned because we we uh, wire brushed this before the the uh, mechanics at the tire store installed the wheels. They they cleaned it all up. If you were doing this on your own, you want to go ahead and take a wire brush to it and clean all the uh, dirt and grime and rust surface um, off of there. So. So see how this fits nice? There's no slop whatsoever. Now it slides back and forth until I lock the, lock the lug nuts into place, but there's no like up and down or side to side movement. So the only thing that we got to do before we set this in place for good is to, let's go ahead and take all these nuts off of here because you want to put some thread locker on all all the threads all the way back just to make sure that you get Loctite all the way around it. And go ahead and put the lug nuts on. Just make sure you got them. Okay, and this takes a 19 millimeter socket. We're just going to hand tighten these, and then use a torque wrench because I don't. You don't want to use an impact mm -hmm. on this stuff if you don't have to, because it is aluminum. You don't want to try to. You don't want to crack this stuff, so you don't want to over torque it. To be able to torque this and not let it spin, you want to go ahead and get a get a long screwdriver, a big screwdriver, and put it inside the rotor. that will hold it in place as you tighten it. And I've got my torque wrench set to 83 foot-pounds just like you would for any of the lug nuts. Okay, let's set it down and see what we got. So I got about an inch, uh, maybe a little less, right there. We're not having any issues there touching. Let me come out a little bit and see how it is when I get a little, a little bit away from the um, full turn because it looks like it might touch it right where that plastic starts. Yeah, it's not really touching right there. All right, let's look at the front side and see how it does. Yep, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to hit. Well, I mean, it's not hitting right now, but even, even if you stuff the wheel, I don't know that it, I mean, maybe it would. I might, might need to push this up a little bit. Um, let me keep turning. Yeah, no issues there. I mean, I can always push this a little forward if I want to. It's not a huge deal. But really, the back is the problem. This you can always move if you needed to because it's plastic. It's that cab mount that you really got to worry about. I may ride around with these for a little bit and see how they do. Uh, if I don't like them, then I'll probably go to the three-quarter inch. Go back to the three-quarter inch because it does give you a little more room. Um, but definitely up here in the control arm, I'm never going to have any problems there at all. It's just a matter of having to do some maneuvering here. Just to give you a little uh, peek at what the control arm looks like, I've got... I can stick my whole hand back here. I mean, that's at least an inch. And that's at almost at full lock. I mean, full, full lock is, this is full lock when not touching the wheel, but you can probably yank on it a little bit more, but it's not gonna get any closer to the upper control arm, so. Bottom line, three quarter inch spacer is the minimum amount that you'd want. Uh, that's ideal. Uh, if you want to get the Bora spacer, spend a little bit more money, get those, and uh, make sure that, uh, that they're wheel-centric. It's probably the ideal scenario. The only thing that I need to take into consideration is, like I mentioned before, about the spare tire. Because if you use a three-quarter inch spacer, your original lug nuts, are or your original studs, wheel studs, are going to stick out past the spacer. So you need to have a cast wheel like this off-road wheel that has that little pocket in the back to allow for that extra space that the stud sticks out past the, past the spacer so that it can fit flush. Because right now my current spare tire rim wouldn't work with that three quarter inch spacer. Now it will work perfectly fine with, with the one inch spacer because the lug nuts are completely covered. There's no issue whatsoever. Um, so I can continue to use my original stamp steel spare rim um, I mean, I, I like the idea of having the, having a matching spare. It's not, it's not necessary. Uh, it's an extra 150 bucks that I would have to go find it out on eBay or somewhere. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, if you're wanting to see what the difference between the various spacers will do, I think that if you used a one and a quarter inch spacer, which a lot of people do, you en you'll end up getting really close to that cab mount and really close to uh, the fender well, actually probably touch at that point, um, and you'll definitely have to do some trimming. So I would recommend going three quarter to one inch at the most, and that puts you at a zero offset. The three quarter inch puts you at a positive five offset. So keep that in mind when you're uh, looking at rims. And even if you were going to choose a completely new rim um, and not the factory stuff. Stuff that you want to be looking for is it no more than zero offset. I wouldn't do anything more than zero offset. I would do positive five offset is what I would be looking for. Anywhere from positive five to zero. Any, I mean, I think those are probably the standard numbers. Maybe you find something at a positive three or positive four. I don't know. Um, but, the, but that's certainly uh, what I would select if I was looking at going with some sort of an aftermarket wheel package um, and I wanted to do a 33-inch tire, at least for the Mickey Thompsons. And the Mickey Thompsons are a big 285, 75, 16. There are some smaller ones. It's actually a wider uh, section width. It's like 11.7 uh, inches in the, the section width of the of the the tire so it's got a bigger bulge um, than most uh, tires of that size I know the Falcon Wild Peak is like 11.1 .1, so definitely over a half inch wider uh, on the Mickey Thompson than, than the Falcon Wild Peak probably could do a, a factory uh, 
rim without any spacers with a Falcon Wild Peak. I don't know that for certain, but you probably could uh, without doing anything. BFG's is a l it's kind of in between. It's I think it's 11.3. I, I, I could be wrong. Don't uh, quote me on that, but I think from doing my research that it was kind of middle of the road in terms of the the section width of the of the actual tire itself. But the Mickey Thompson's a big one uh, compared to most of them. So if it'll fit on here, it'll fit on most of them. Um, so hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. And um, if you want to see other updates uh, that I might be doing in terms of vehicle projects, house projects, um, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it if you did. Okay, thanks everybody.